Hi, this is Domine with a little introduction to this uh, new podcast episode. Um, so yeah, during this episode, which we recorded actually a few weeks ago, but I only got around to editing it really recently, uh, we mentioned the movie Galaxy Quest and um, couldn't say much about it because it was so far away in our memory. But um, we just watched it again a few nights ago, and uh, yeah, we can confirm it was a really, it was a really well written and just a great comedy, great sci-fi comedy. Um, and um, also uh, on the night before publishing this uh, episode, we got a new patron, so I want to give a little shout out to him as well, um, Derek Motes. Thank you for joining us on Patreon. And that brings me to um, our special thanks to our Patreon supporters. So that's um, our creators, Sam Hodge and Dustin Garner, our Saint Peter Strandkrone, our Grand Generals, Joe Goth Ur and Liam Gabriel, our Witch Hunter Masters, Yeezy Dusht, Caitlin Bredenkamp and Mix and Match, who also has a, a really cool YouTube channel, by the way. Um, our Witch Hunters, Osarion, Katmoseri, and Ryan Stock. Thank you guys for supporting us. And um, we hope you'll enjoy this podcast. Hello and welcome to the Audio Epics Podcast. Here we are again with another storytelling podcast. And it feels like there have been galactic eons of time between them, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So, I think it's time for you... To introduce me, wife. Wife? Uh, oh, sorry, I spaced out. Um, this is my husband, Domin de Groot. Yes. And this is my wife. <laughs> and this is my wife, Alien Hostage. I mean, Alien Hoskins. <laughs> Alien Hoskins. Yeah, I, I remember I've actually been called Alien Hostage. I think it was. It was in mid-school or something. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought it was funny, but um, and I certainly always felt like an alien, so I, I guess it was quite fitting. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about aliens. Aliens. They are one of the most popular things, creatures, in storytelling. But you know, you can have them. In all kinds of different genres and ways and yeah, like uh, appearances. What would be the first genre we think of? Actually, yeah, when you say alien, the first thing that comes to mind is, is alien. Yeah, so horror, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that first alien movie um, was pretty. You know, I think Scary. it's it's a it's a it's a really um, successful horror. Um, achievement <laughs> um yeah, and and was, still the best of the series it was dark it was almost as dark as our tea yes in my case indeed because i'm drinking earl grey um which Black. we actually bought in the efteling yes yeah that's the so we talked about the efteling last episode in our last podcast and, yeah um, and um that's uh, in the souvenir shop they had like a little tin and it had you know pictures of fairies on the outside and there was loose leaf earl grey tea on the inside and it's actually quite good and the tin is gorgeous yes these owls are really cute um i'm drinking the black tea as well uh but with milk and honey because uh i have trouble it's more of the british way yeah the british way i have trouble digesting coffee and black tea it's, it messes up with my mind and body I turn into a, the Hulk or something or maybe an alien I start getting this mouth in my mouth and right comes out and <laughs> all kinds of yeah. creatures start coming out of my stomach so like, yeah talking about the alien the uh, the design by the I think um, Swiss artist H.R. Giger really? is uh, iconic of course um, he he um, he was w well known for his very disturbing paintings that always really? combined, you know, organic and sort of um, technological elements yeah. in a very dark sort of 
it has this um, Hermes Mora kind of feel yeah. to it. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, though I think Hermes Mora was inspired by uh, Cthulhu first and foremost. Yeah, I was I was thinking about the author, but uh, Lovecraft. Like Lovecraft, right? Yeah. Uh, very, very Lovecraftian. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And the whole concept. And very scary. I, I remember I, I watched uh, the first Alien movie when I was relatively young, so mm. that really made a big impact. Yeah, especially the the, the chest bursting scene. Yeah, kind of made you think about uh, giving birth and stuff and. Yeah, do you remember who who the victim was? The guy that happened to? Which actor that was? No. Who had the alien coming out of him? No idea. It was John Hurt. Really? Yeah. Been too long. Yeah. Must have hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Okay. <laughs> that's, see, that's our kind of humor. <laughs> so, it's not just dad jokes. There's also mom jokes, apparently. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not a thing, right? Mm. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> we, often, we often think exactly... The, the same jokes out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so uh, um, talking about jokes, uh, comedy, another genre where yes. aliens are very present, I would say, omnipresent. Yes, and the funniest aliens, are, in my view, are the ones from Third Rock from the Sun. Oh, those are amazing. Yeah. So, but maybe not everyone in the audience knows about this because it's a show from the 90s. It was a sitcom. Um, we're dead old, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was on TV when we were young, when we when we were young, when we were kids, um, and um, it was about um, what appeared to be a normal family. Well, not really normal, but they looked like a human family. About as normal as we are. Yeah, but they lived in in an attic in Ohio, but um, they were actually aliens in disguise, sent to the Earth to sort of you know learn about. Humanity. I've got to see. Oh my God! I'm gorgeous. And I think the humor mostly came from um, the, the the you had the commander, uh, which was D Dick Solomon. Yeah. Uh, played by John Lithgow, and uh, he was. Uh, he was in charge of the operation. Uh, they were studying humans, uh, and he always uh, encountered some human behavior. Yeah. And then he, at first, he rejected it, but then he got obsessed with it. Yeah, I think part of why he was so funny is because he was a physics professor, and he looked like this dignified gentleman, you know, with uh, graying hair and all that. But he was a he was incredibly childlike. Yeah, and, he was a little kid inside. Yeah, and he was always super enthusiastic and <laughs> uh, discovering new things. And he either hated something or he loved it. He got obsessed. It was with never it. an in between. Like he <laughs> got obsessed with doing taxes. Oh, yeah. And they always thought they discovered things that humans hadn't discovered yet. Right. Like, we could lie on our taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were so proud of that. Or uh, they had this sophisticated um, gentleman's club and, and uh, only the elite could uh, could be part of it. And then that became his obsession, getting into that. And there was always this new Dick Solomon obsession. Uh, yeah. While Sally, was, she was actually uh, a guy because all the aliens were actually purple tubes, right? <laughs> yeah, you never get to see that. But they, they mention it a couple of times that in reality, they actually look like purple tubes. And their um, their commander is the big giant head, <laughs> yeah. uh, the the boss of the planet. Who is actually uh, played by William Shatner. Right. Yeah, yeah. he <laughs> actually comes down to earth in yeah. human form as well at some in, point. Yeah, in one of the later. N not episodes. my favorite episodes. Um, and then um, the lieutenant is actually a, a, a guy, purple tube in the in a female body. So mm. she she's really uh, discovering her own. Femininity. Yeah, so she's like actually this, you know, strong military commander, but now she has to be the girl. So yeah, um, that's that's quite a challenge for but her as she well. Is, she's really tough, right? And then she, when she's she the when one. she's crying for the first time, she says like, "I'm leaking." <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Tommy. He's the the youngest. Uh, he's supposed to be um, 
uh, Sally's supposed to be Dick Solomon's sister. And, right. And Tommy's supposed to be his son, but it's all made up, of course, the, the family situation to, to blend in as, as normally as possible. Yeah. But Tommy's actually, um, in in alien terms, he's the he's the oldest one, so he's actually the most experienced and most intelligent yeah. and wise of the, and he gets to go to, um, to school. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole. <laughs> and he other... goes to puberty and yeah. all these things, so that's another conflict. Uh, so so. He, he's a little kid in the show, but he actually grew up to become uh, quite a successful, well-known actor. He's uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, who's, who's done a, a number of, you know, well-known films and stuff. So, um, yeah, so, so that's Third Rock from the Sun, I think, our favorite sci-fi comedy. Yeah, it was really funny. Oh, and, and then you have Mars Attacks, that's also a, a famous uh, comedy, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember liking that when I was a kid. <laughs> Yeah, it's, me too, but it's been a long time. It was a bit over the top, I can remember. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe very much. It, it came out in the same year or, or, or a year after Independence Day. Um, so um, so that it was kind of like the, the funny version of it, I guess. Oh, okay. It was about the Earth being invaded by Martians, but they were really like little green men in little flying saucers you know they looked as 50s cliche as you can imagine and all they ever said was ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and um <laughs> and it was just a really silly ridiculous m- movie <laughs> and then you had other um funny aliens like in monsters versus aliens and all those um movies, yeah animation movies um one um one sci-fi comedy I remember also that I um, would like to watch again. Because I've, I've seen it once a long, 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 long time ago. Um, it was uh, Galaxy Quest. Oh, I don't, um, I don't know that one. So it, it's, it's a movie about a cast from a show like Star Trek. Very, very like Star Trek. Obviously meant to... <laughs> meant to be to Star, Trek. Star Trek yeah um, and they're on at a sci-fi convention but um, there are real aliens and they think that they've seen the show but they think the aliens think that they're real galactic heroes <laughs> and they want to recruit them to help them you know <laughs> with some problem and so the, these actors these human actors get involved in real galactic situations <laughs> um, Actor heroes. Yeah, <laughs> that was with Sigourney Weaver and uh, Alan Rickman was in that. Oh wow, uh, that's a that's a pretty cool cast. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see it again um, because I don't remember much of it. Yeah, uh, and of course there are uh, plenty of other genres, but oh, uh, uh, sorry, I, another one popped into my mind. Yeah, Men in Black. Oh right, yeah, that's, yeah, that's meant to be humorous as well. You but you didn't think it was funny or? Ah. Uh, I thought it was a tad overrated. I think there were there were things about it that I thought were quite original, but they weren't necessarily the humorous elements. I liked the whole plot line that you know there was this little marble and it contained an yeah. entire galaxy. <laughs> yeah. And it was it was on this this. Um, but that was this that was cat's... stolen from Doctor Seuss. It was <laughs> right, yeah, with the 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 the, the who's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But uh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> let's move on then. Um, so yeah, um, there are plenty of other genres, and and I think uh, also well, uh, humorous uh, shows like Doctor Who. I think it's Doc- Doctor Who. It's mainly humorous, right? It's not very serious. I don't know. It, it, c- it can get very emotional and dramatic too. Yeah. Um. So I guess it's, it's it's its own genre, and there are other uh, examples like that, uh, like like Star Wars. That's actually its own genre. It's yeah. more like space opera. It's not really science fiction. I, I think Star Wars is fully fantasy, actually. It, it's, yeah, it's it's more just like fantasy. A, fan- a fantasy setting with futuristic elements, but it's pure fantasy. 
and I'm not even sure you can talk about aliens because they're all they're all aliens. Yeah, you've right? got humans, but and but you've also got other species, but there's not really like planet Earth or anything. So so the humans come from another planet, then. I don't think Star Wars ever sort of establishes whether there is an original planet where all the humans come from. It, it never mentions that. So it's really its own its own thing. There's there's no it's not like um, Earth in the future or. Um, no 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 uh, it's uh, the same a long time ago in yeah. a galaxy right. far it's, far it's, away. It's the first it's thing that you see ago, on the screen. Right. So, yeah, um, so it's pure secondary world fantasy, um, which is what I've always loved about Star Wars, that it, that it is that. Um, Star Trek, on the other hand, yeah, that's that's in the future. Yeah, uh, we've, we've watched some Star Trek, but we're not really Trekkies, right? No, definitely no Trekkies, because, you know, I don't really know that much about it. Um, I've seen a little bit of The Next Generation, a very little bit of the original series, I think one or two episodes of Deep Space Nine, that's about it, I think. So, no, I, I don't really don't know much about it. But one thing's for sure: aliens are everywhere. They but are. why are aliens so so entertaining, so interesting? I think um, there are several things, several reasons why aliens are popular to include in stories. And the first one would be the sense of mystery. Um, yeah, right. We, we like to stare at the dark, endless sky and wonder if something or someone else is out there watching us. And yeah, the, the galaxy and the universe are mysterious places that invoke a lot of questions and stir the imagination. So yeah, I can, I can see that. Of course, yeah. But there's also another reason why for certain kinds of movies we like aliens. Because they're scary. Yeah. They're a threat. Um, you know the, the the threat of the alien invasion yeah that's that's a big trope the alien invasion yeah. of course it is because because you know there's this vast universe out there and who knows if something hostile is you know would would be coming from there you know yeah and i think what makes aliens extra scary is you don't know anything about them as a as a threat mm. Uh, they're from out there and yeah. you don't know their their customs you don't know are they intelligent how intelligent are they yeah how much do they know about they us? might have a completely different kind of yeah. intelligence or even when they're not hostile there's something slightly unsettling about how different they are that like in the movie arrival that was that was one of the main main things in that movie I think is that the aliens they they weren't hostile. They were actually friendly, but mm. but they were still kind of scary because they were so different from from us. Yeah, right. And in contrast with the host, where the the aliens that invade the planet are actually really peaceful and in a way um, more pleasant than than humans. So that's why they invade uh, Earth because uh, humans keep uh, having war and and conflicts and they want to bring peace on earth but but they look like these fluffy luminous dandelion seeds yeah um. <laughs> yeah they did they did um they were really cute but <laughs> i i think the the point of the movie there is um it's about freedom human freedom even even if we we make stupid decisions uh, mm. as humans and even if we are violent um this the main character is in there with well, the why 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 is it you haven't explained what the aliens do the they um yeah the, the movie's called the host so the the humans are actually hosts to a kind of a parasite that looks really gorgeous it's it's like really cute it looks so like a this this dandelion it's like seat. invasion of the body snatchers something like that but much cuter <laughs> yeah and the the I... main character is a young girl and she's actually the only one in this invasion of, of peaceful alien creatures um, that is consciously, uh, consciously inside her body right. together with the alien um, while the other ones are actually taken over by, by these peaceful aliens. She's actually inside and she starts to rebel I just realized some, as, you, as you're describing the story, I just realized something. So it's based on a book by Stephanie Meyer, right? Yeah. 
it is. So I think Stephanie Meyer did in the host, she did to Invasion of the Body Snatchers what she did to vampires in, in Twilight. Because, you know... The, she made it, it cute. <laughs> yeah, the vamp, in Twilight, the vampire, they're, they're sparkling. <laughs> um, you know, Edward, you know, he's actually... He's not bad. He means well. Not as uh, you mention it, yeah. You know, it's, it's <laughs> kind of like that, but then the sci-fi... Yeah, I never realized it. I, I always uh, loved the host more than uh, than the Twilight series. Um, it, it, th- it was a better film, in, 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 certainly. Also, I think it's it's about uh, autonomy and and free will, and and I thought it was really beautiful. And I think the the music by Antonio Pinto in the the movie mm. also adds a lot to the atmosphere. Yeah. It's it's a it's a really great soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, but we were talking about big scary aliens, like you know. When Ronan was two, he he said to us all of a sudden, "I have a mouth in my mouth." That's the age when children just say really strange stuff. Mm-hmm. And it both made us think about alien immediately, and it, we had this <clears throat> scary feeling. Yeah, because uh, that that's actually one of the scariest creatures. Oh, speaking ever made speaking in, of that, there's movies. another one, sort of loosely connected to it. Predator? Yeah, a Predator. Right, they actually have a movie together. Starting yeah. together as... Yeah, and, and, and video games. Good, where bad, they, yeah. uh, good and bad cop? No, both bad cops. Yeah. <laughs> both, but both it, really w- bad. what was scary about uh, Predator was that it could turn invisible and it had these mandibles. Yeah. It, the mouth could like open really wide and had like these insect-like mandibles. And a long face. Yeah. It was always in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Oh yeah, you had the the prequel to uh, Prometheus. The prequel to Alien, right, yeah. Yeah, that movie really confused me. Um, I think it was meant to confuse me. It was, yeah. I, I had really, I really didn't know what to think of that movie because it had like this really great atmosphere yeah, and this sense of grandeur at, at the beginning it and did. the music was fantastic and had this mysterious opening where you know you, you could see how life on earth was supposed to be you know originated from this sort of humanoid alien that sort of sacrificed itself you mm. know something like that in the beginning of the movie it was very um strange but um but then it uh, halfway through it suddenly turned into this bee movie, you know. <laughs> I think not uh, with the bee, bees, the buzzing. No, bees. <laughs> like no, no. But but you know that, that it yeah. it was like it suddenly turned into this cheap sort of horror silliness. Uh, I I know what you mean. Yeah. It was uh, kind of at the same. It was, vibe. and it felt like it was trying to be profound and have. All these ideas about life and, and God and, and meaningful things. Yeah, and but then it doesn't really do anything with them. Mm. So. Yeah, it left me kind of confused too. So yeah, I think it was it was actually maybe just kind of pretentious. Maybe too f- trying to be too philosophical. Yeah. Well, actually, we could talk about the clear alien invasions, like just yeah. aliens invade, and then you have the tough guy. Alien and, invasions. Yeah putting up a fight against them like war of the worlds tom cruise yeah actually i think that's Hero? well that's the if you take the original novel i think that was the first alien invasion story probably. that i know of probably uh, um yeah. and you know i i love the opening of that no one would have believed in the early um 19th century or uh, it was originally i think um, but then they turned it into the 21st century, of course, in the Wasn't movie. Wasn't it a radio drama too? Yes, first? of course. Yeah, uh, the, probably the, the most, most famous, famous radio, radio drama, drama of all ever, time. Yeah. Because people thought it was real, that, um, or, or at least that's sort of the legend that surrounds it. Yeah. Um, and then you have, uh, if we're talking about Tom Cruise, we have Edge of Tomorrow as well. That was this kind of... Um, Groundhog Day uh, alien invasion yeah, that, story, right? That's uh, that was the movie where he kept on dying and coming back, and um, he had to sort of figure it out. Um, That's it was a really I thought it was a really good plot. It was a really good movie, and the aliens had a very original look to them. 
I don't really remember. It also had Emily Blunt, and I like her a lot too. Um, it was a good movie. I have a bad memory for movies. <laughs> it's too bad. Yeah, I don't quite remember um, how it all, in the end, was resolved. So we could watch it again. Because yeah, put it on our rewatch list. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then you have Independence Day. I think yeah. one of the most famous alien yeah, invasion movies. I think movies people today, uh, young people today, they don't. I think they don't know. They don't realize just how big of an event Independence Day was when it came out. When we were kids in the in the mid nineties, it was like it was like the Star Wars of our generation. I think. Yeah. Um, I had definitely heard about it, but I discovered it relatively late. I think I've only watched it a couple of years ago with you. Yeah, um, I was really surprised that you had never seen it before. Yeah, and I really couldn't remember. Usually when I forget about a movie and I start watching it, things start coming back, but I really hadn't watched it before. So I think it's, it's fascinating when you... You take War of the Worlds, especially, you know, the, the, the Tom Cruise movie, mm -hmm. and it's dark and it's this gloomy and, you know... Oh, I like the sounds. Sort of, you have to the sort of... The ominous sounds, these yeah. mechanical sounds of these yeah. machines. I love it. Whereas Independence Day is, you know, it's this big Hollywood blockbuster with, you know, it's got this... We love America, and America's gonna <laughs> save the world vibe to it. Yeah, and the hero vibe. Yeah, and it's the, all really positive and... The heroic uh, yeah. soundtrack. Um, yeah, super heroic, patriotic soundtrack. I love I love the music. Yeah, um, it's awesome. It, it was just a, a super fun summer blockbuster movie without, you know, any kind of irony or subversion to it. They couldn't make that anymore today, I think. But we did uh, recently watch a very special alien invasion movie that really surprised us, actually, in many ways, which was A Quiet Place. And also A Quiet Place too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and indeed there's a, a sequel to it. And it's directed uh, by John Krasinski and he, he also plays the, the lead. And that was it was really a surprise that movie because uh, we knew the the actor from uh, from The Office. He, he plays Jim. Is this laid back, yeah. uh, funny guy with a secret crush? I had never imagined that Jim from The Office would make a movie like that. He yeah, he, he turned it, out to be a very talented. Because uh, it's a all brilliant around. movie. It's yeah. one of the best movies in its genre that I've ever seen. It Maybe was the best. Thrilling from the first yeah. scene. To the end, it was, uh, and and even the 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 sequel was very decent because uh, not just I thought it was also probably one of the best sequels I've ever seen because it it just did everything right that you could possibly expect from a sequel. I think I think it's the perfect sequel. Come to think of it, it it keeps what what was good about the original. It keeps what was unique about it, but it also expands upon it. Thus does new things with it, introduces new elements. Exactly, yeah. Without going overboard, and staying it, true to the original. And staying true to the characters as well. Yeah, that, and yeah. Develop, developing the characters further as well. Absolutely. So, perfect sequel. Yeah, um, it was amazing. We were really baffled by, by that movie. And I believe it was on Netflix, right? Yeah, they're both on Nef Netflix right now. It, well, the, the, the Belgian <laughs> Netflix, I don't know. Whether yeah, it's and, and with Netflix, you never know how long it's going to stay on there. But, yeah, um, that's the problem with streaming. But, uh, but yeah, uh, you should check it out if you haven't already. Um, the concept is actually that uh, Earth is invaded by an alien race, a very scary alien race very as well. sensitive hearing. Very sensitive hearing. Like but they no have, sight. They have 
ears like the the BFG. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, they they look very. The yeah. ears are done <laughs> in a way that doesn't look stupid because it could have could have looked really stupid. Yeah, no, but it's it's cool, but they have these long limbs as well, and yeah. they're really scary. Uh, if you thought that they could never come up with a new design for for aliens that is original and scary, then you're mistaken. If you if you watch a Quiet Place, you will know. <coughs> Exactly what we mean. Yep. Oh, and it uh, it also features uh, also stars Emily Blunt as right. uh, the mother of the family. So it's about a family, um, a small um, family on a farm. Yeah, a boy and a girl, uh, children, a boy and a girl. Um, and the the girl uh, there are already a number of problems introduced uh, around the characters because. The aliens that have invaded the planet have super hearing, mm -hmm. so they will kill you instantly if you make a sound. So yeah. everything has to be, um, yeah, they have to remain silent all the time. And on the one hand, they have the benefit of having a daughter uh, who is um, deaf. It's not really a benefit because she doesn't know if she's making yeah, a sound. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> but the benefit is that they know sign language pretty well. Yes, that's so the benefit. They can communicate um, fluently with each other. And, um, and another problem is that the the mother is pregnant with a child. Yes. So she, well, not, not with an alien. Um, and yeah, she, she cannot make a sound. So you, you already know. The point she's going to give birth is going to be very painful, but she cannot make a sound. Yeah, and 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 um, and Tom Cruise is not involved this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, that yeah, that was a Scientology joke, by the way. Um, Other uh, alien mm -hmm. invasion movies. Yeah, um, we also saw Extinction, which was a Netflix original. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That um, one. But uh, was that yeah, the one with the big twist. That was him? yeah. It was like the whole movie was it was all about this major twist that sort of completely changes the whole plot. But I thought it was a bit silly. Yeah, but but we're not gonna reveal it because no. if you still want to watch it, we don't want to spoil it for you. But yeah, yeah, it was uh, kind of original. I didn't hate it, but there were a number of problems with it as well yeah. what I thought was weird was when I looked at other sort of user reviews uh, for this movie a lot of people are complaining about the children in this movie that the children were always saying mommy daddy were scared and and I thought you know that's normal that kids yeah. act that way what are you I mean I thought it was a stupid complaint there were other issues with the movie but that was a stupid complaint that's just <laughs> probably from people who don't have children or who just hate them and eat them for lunch. There's another um, thing that, uh, that that they commonly do in, in movies and series. Uh, that is people uh, as aliens. It, as, as, as soon as a, a story takes place on another planet, then we're actually the aliens, yeah, if, right? Yeah, if, if we go to another planet and there's already other beings there, then yeah. yeah, then we're the aliens. And that creates a sense of wonder about the other planet or culture as as a human invader. So that's yeah. another function of introducing aliens in storytelling. Yeah, and, and of course, um, Avatar is the first one that that comes to mind. Yeah. Um, where they also, they actually call the humans aliens in the movie. Outcast. Betrayer. Alien. I was in the place the eye does not see. Um, I seem to remember. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that's a completely different feeling, isn't it? Um, got a completely different... You get a completely different dynamic. Because you don't get this sense of mystery of, you know, what's out there. But you get the sense of mystery of what's in here, in this jungle. Yeah, exactly. With these strange creatures and uh what you know it's like it's like going on an adventure to a, a, a strange exotic location that's what made the first avatar so appealing and that's why we watched it six times in the theaters <laughs> i just loved all the creatures and all the and it wasn't in, in 3d right 
Yeah. That was and and the the score is gorgeous and yeah. and and you have this vegetation that is completely different, inspired by but yeah. completely different from earth vegetation. You have animals, uh, creatures that but, are yeah. What, to what, the what I love about Avatar um, is the world building. How yeah. everything behind it, you know, it, it's not just they didn't just come up with something weird. Everything sort of makes sense. Yeah, biologically. In, uh, yeah, how and it would be in that world. And, yeah. yeah, and that's that's quite that's quite I think the real achievement of Avatar. I think a lot of people sort of get stuck on you know whether the the plot is original. I think it's it's so silly to just be preoccupied only with that aspect when there is so much more to these movies. Um, Right, and if you get stuck on that, there are numerous other popular uh, series and movies that don't really have an original plot, that just don't get the same complaints. Yeah, so. like like uh, Spider-Man reboot number 576. Oh, is that out yet? Uh, I think, yeah. I haven't watched it. I think we're already at 577 by this point. <laughs> so, yeah, and um, John Carter. Um, right, Barsoom. Yeah. Is also uh, is also a story where the the guy the man is um, is actually an alien because he's he's on a different planet and didn't that involve time travel as well kind of no um oh, it's been a while since I've watched that movie towards the end there was an element of I don't remember mm-hmm. that 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 reminds me of. Planet of the Apes. I don't know why I was thinking about that. But Planet? That, yeah, that's a complex story as well because it has the twist. I don't think you can say that's got anything to do with aliens. No, but the the humans on the Planet of the Apes must feel like aliens somehow. Yeah. Which they actually aren't. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but John Carter was actually um, based on a series of novels. Um, written i think also in the late 19th or early 20th century um by edgar rice burroughs who also wrote tarzan and the first novel that i think that the movie is based on was called a princess of mars but that title was probably too girly so (laughs) they uh they turned it into john carter but yeah it features a lot of creatures a lot of alien well non-human people uh, i guess you could say also one of the the stories where you have the human as sort of the alien invader is the space trilogy by C.S. Lewis. I really enjoyed especially the second one, Perelandra. But the whole idea uh, with that Lewis, with Lewis is um, he he t- you know he he tends to sort of approach these things from his Christian worldview, and um, what he did there was. He had the idea, what if there was uh, a world that uh, had never known um, original sin, that had never fallen, and then suddenly human beings come to this world, and sort of they bring their fallenness into it. They spoil all the Yeah, they come spoiling (laughs) things, actually. Mm. Uh, So that's sort of what, what that that story was about the party poopers <laughs> humans as the party poopers <laughs> <laughs> another reason why we introduce alien in aliens and storytelling is to let the government know that we know yeah the, and that we don't like them <laughs> <laughs> so yeah as, as uh, aliens as a part of uh, a part of the government government conspiracies that uh, feeling of insecurity who can we still trust and what more are they keeping from us yeah so i I guess probably one of the biggest shows of the 90s the the x-files do you have a theory i have plenty of theories maybe what you can explain to me is why it's bureau policy to label these cases as unexplained phenomena and ignore them do you believe in the existence of extraterrestrials? Um, that was a huge cultural thing in our time in the 90s. It's sort of, it was really shocking to me 
when I was teaching um, about nine, nine or ten years ago, um, I had a job as a teacher and I was, uh, I was discussing postmodernism in class and, and I used an episode from the X-Files as an example of postmodernism. And these kids... Postmodern Prometheus? Uh, no, it was um, uh, numerous. Uh... Uh, Josie chunks from outer space. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. Anyway, these kids—they didn't know. None of them knew the X Files. They'd never heard of it. They'd never seen it. They'd never heard about they'd Scully n- and no, Mulder. They no. It was completely wow. alien to them. Whoa, that's. I cannot, and I was I can really shocked. That. I was baffled. It was such a big thing. How is for that us. possible? And it's like, it's like, to, if today you didn't know, I don't know, <laughs> what's something that everybody knows today? SpongeBob? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's just unimaginable that you wouldn't but know. Like the, the Simpsons, they, they do know the Simpsons, right? Because it's still running somewhere on, an, yeah, on another I, I planet. Yes, <laughs> I guess. But that's a, I think the two biggest shows were the X Files and the Simpsons in the 90s. I think nothing could. Even I, come I guess so. You had Stargate SG One, and you had Charmed, yeah. and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and and you had Oh Roswell, another alien. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but none of those things come close to the level of popularity that Angel. No, that's true. And there's an episode of The Simpsons. Yeah, with, with Scully, Scully and Mulder. Yeah. yeah, but no one beats Scully and Mulder as as a. Uh, detective couple actually like and just the whole the whole concept of you know the the paranoia and you can't trust the government and <laughs> yeah that whole that whole thing was just i was totally obsessed with that show but uh i do have to admit that i i especially love the monster of the week episodes yeah not, me too. not so much the government conspiracy actually uh, actually i i totally don't like the government conspiracy episodes because i think they're very boring and they never really lead anywhere. And then I started watching the n- the new seasons, and I was really disappointed because I I really didn't like them. Like no. I I always give them a shot, and then I get disappointed. It's like they want to bring everything back from those times, and then like Twin Peaks, and then make a new season. I ha- I, I don't. I haven't mm-hmm. watched Twin Peaks uh, the new season yet because I'm I'm just scared. I I think th- I I I think you just can't do that. You can't just bring something back with, you know, old actors, yeah. old wrinkly actors and just, you know, just go no, no. Not even with Botox. But 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 it's I've got the feeling when they when they do it these days it's not just that they bring back the old actors and they look wrinkly and they old. They want to change the whole concept. But it's also like, yeah, yeah, like they want to Overwrite sort of, it. Yeah, like they they want to sort of undo it. They want to sort of... With modern yeah. themes and, and that's uh, that's why I, I haven't watched Twin Peaks, uh, the new season. Because I, I loved that series and I'm just I'm scared they're going to ruin it. Another reason why you want to, uh, why why you might want to introduce aliens in your storytelling is um, to end the loneliness of your human character who feels like an alien, like kind of as a best friend. And I believe there was actually a sitcom called that, My Best Friend, the Alien. Have you heard of it? No, hmm. but um, it sounds like something that. Would probably exist on the Disney I Channel. I thought or it was uh, this kind of uh, a show more directed to teenagers, kind of a yeah. boy meets world kind of vibe <laughs> to it, but then with an alien. Mm. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe our listeners know about it or have watched it. Um, I do remember point. Alf was kind of yeah. like this Muppet yeah. with a nose like a worm and kind of <laughs> a hairy back and. Um, like straight from Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny looking, um, but he was an alien, right? Yeah, wasn't that more like a, a a show that didn't really have stories, but was more like interactive? Like he was, they were interacting with kids and getting uh, drawings from children and discussing them. I, I don't know, more no, like I, Samson here. No, I I think I think it was it was a yeah a sit more like a sitcom really. I th- 
I, I, I seem to remember, but... I, have, I haven't watched it. Uh, I, I know I what he looks like. I was very small when it was on TV. So. And of course, the ultimate <clears throat> best friend is E.T. Yep. Because he's he, this alien abandoned and he wants to return home, but he doesn't want to lose his new best friend either. So it's, it's kind of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, E.T. is the ultimate example of it's that, It's beautiful of how this friendship develops between uh, Elliot and, and E.T. Uh, it was one of my favorite movies as a child, and it introduced me to Steven Spielberg, so... It's kind of funny that we we sort of discuss these sort of obscure, trashy <laughs> things from the past, and then we come, only then do we come to the, the great classic. Yeah, keep the best for last, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, Alien... Uh, not Alien. E.T. is, of course, also the the, the music is masterful, uh, but of course it's John Williams. Also, the atmosphere and it has everything. It has these scary elements. It yeah. has this touching, uh, emotional yeah. um, the whole thing about it, and yeah, it's visually gorgeous. Like when they uh, they ride their bikes in the sky, yeah. and and you have this full moon behind it. Uh, it's it's gorgeous. Also, the spaceship. Yeah, you, you, you with the that concept, you could have made like this cheesy kids movie that no one would have remembered, but Steven Spielberg, using his talents, turned it into a great classic, an evergreen. Was movie. this an original script from Spielberg, or uh, did he, he didn't write it? Uh, but um, script from a... actually, the person who wrote it was uh, Harrison Ford's wife at the time. Really? Yeah. But they got divorced, but um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, she's actually the one who wrote the story based on Spielberg's idea. Yeah, still, um, still it was his story. idea. Um, Our kids loved it too. They they watched it and they they fell in love with it. It's also it sort of it encapsulates the '80s so well, you know. If you want to know what the aliens, uh, what the 80s felt like, <laughs> uh, E.T. sort of <coughs> captures that feel of the 80s, I think. Um, which later on, you know, they, they, they also did it in uh, Stranger Things. Yeah. But there it, in Stranger Things, it's, it's sort of a reconstruction of your memories of the 80s. But E.T. Right. E. was made in the 80s. Small it's boys the real thing. on bicycles. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's very iconic. Uh, they did another movie like that, right? That really uh, encapsulated the the feel of the '80s with these little guys. Um, the Goonies. Super Eight. Oh yeah, Super Eight. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was sort of the precursor to Stranger Things, I think. Also, about an alien, I seem to remember. There was an alien in that movie. Yeah. Super Eight. Yeah, and a spaceship. But I don't really remember the story. Me neither. But I, I liked it, especially the. Yeah. The 80s vibe to it and yeah it, I, I think it was yeah it was one of J.J. Abrams better achievements Stephen King is also uh, famous for uh, having these 80s themes in his yeah. books uh, and yeah little guys on bicycles like in the the It movies yeah which is actually kind of an alien too he, yeah actually it is right it is an alien yeah uh, it's revealed in the second movie that... But he's not your best friend, right? <laughs> not really your best friend, no. Uh, I wouldn't get along with him, no. But... But Lilo yeah. and Stitch are best friends. Lilo and Stitch, indeed. That was the next one on our list. Yeah, and, and that was a, a really surprisingly good movie because I've always kind of... I've had it for a long time on DVD... And I hadn't watched it. And then when, when I finally got to it, um, I really liked it. I, I thought yeah. Lilo was really endearing. She was she was this typical amazing child. Yeah, I don't think there's anything <laughs> typical about her. She's quite a unique character. Yeah, but she was endearing as a child. She had Absolutely, this, this yeah. great personality and she was, she was funny and she was smart. It's an incredibly original movie. I'm kind of, when I saw it, I was kind of floored by just how unique it was. I couldn't believe that it was a Disney movie because it doesn't feel like a Disney movie. It feels more like a Pixar, which is actually Disney, but usually more original. Or, or... But also the, the, the animation style, it, it, it just looks and feels very different from what you expect from Disney. Yeah, that's that's why I think I I didn't 
immediately watch it and um, because it looked so different but yeah I guess it was just prejudice because I really I really loved it and the, the whole, story the whole just the fact that it's set on Hawaii just that alone is like and that they really incorporate all of those elements um, of that location it's actually about a a family that fell apart and it's a sister taking care of her little sister um, Lilo and um, social service uh, comes by regularly to see if she can actually handle it and it's a challenge and then um, and then there are aliens she decides yeah the aliens uh, <laughs> I guess the, the stitch is kind of considered dangerous on this planet and they he ends up on earth he's like, but he's this ex experiment by a crazy scientist and who was uh, banned by the galactic government. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's sort of what happens. And he uh, ends up in a, in a, a dog shelter, an abandoned yeah. dog shelter. And uh, Lilo uh, ends up buying him as a dog, but he's not a dog, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they say he was run over by a truck. <laughs> he survived somehow. <laughs> so they adopt him as a dog and then... Actually, he causes a lot of trouble, but then he becomes part of their family, and it's really, it's it's a really nice it's a really nice movie, nice feel to it. Okay. And then you have Home. That's another animation with an alien. Right. With with, uh, with the voice of uh, Jim, Jim Parsons. Jim Parsons. Yeah. yeah. Sheldon. It was the Big Bang It was about these cute little aliens who, I think they they came to Earth for some really <coughs> stupid reason. Uh, yeah, it was the other way around. It was I really think. silly. Uh, instead of uh, Lilo and Stitch, the, the, it was an alien on the run from his own, own people because he f felt lonely and misunderstood. And then he kind of finds his place on Earth with a, with a friend. So that's, that's for the alien best friend. And then, of course, another reason why we include aliens in stories is simply as a reflection on, on, on human life. You know, to see our everyday things from, from a different sp perspective. Yeah, um, and the best example of that we've already mentioned yeah. is actually Third Rock from the Sun. Yeah, and, and the <coughs> part of why that show worked so well was because they took these really eccentric aliens and using them showed us how weird humans are yeah um exactly all our strange little you know habits and customs and concerns and and you know how for aliens how alien they are <laughs> that's usually uh, what a fantasy world clashed with um, <coughs> clashed with the human world does like it, it mm. always reminds me of the line the witch and the wardrobe where lucy pevensey meets mr tumnus for the first time and then uh, she wants to shake his hand and he says, why? And then she says, I don't know. Yeah. And like, then they shake they sh shake hands, but it's not like people normally do. It's like more like literally taking a finger and then sh wobbling a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. so it makes you realize that we have these customs that we think are very normal and um, but actually are mm. kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Because we've forgotten where they come from, right? Like putting your glasses together uh, before you drink, which was kind of a custom to prevent being poisoned by the other party, right? So that your drinks would mingle and then... Apparently that's where that comes from. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that Roswell, I never watched that. Roswell, yeah. That was uh, also a series uh, in the 90s. And it was aired together with Buffy and Angel and Charmed and all of these things. It was one of the series I, I watched the least of, I think. But I remember it was about uh, also a, a, a made-up family, kind of like uh, in Third Rock from the Sun. Um, and it's based on a YA book series uh, called Roswell High by Melinda Metz. It has these, uh, these aliens who look like uh, humans and they are called the Royal Four and they, they are kind of a, a made-up family as well so uh, and they 
they kind of have friendships with uh, humans so um and and um the way they uh try to build up a life in in high school also confronts you with the the strange customs in high school and the the way things go especially the the, the american high school which we don't have yeah. like for on, for us it's it is kind of alien uh, yeah, I mean, that, we, that whole we, atmosphere. we're familiar with it from TV shows. Yeah. And when I see those uh, TV shows about American high schools, they always make me think I'm so happy I never had to go to one of those. Because you uh, would have been locked up in, in one of those locker rooms. Yeah, probably lockers, right? throughout the entire year. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and I prob- probably wouldn't wouldn't have gone to prom or, or had difficult. Or I, I would probably have gone to prom with the school dork or something like <laughs> well, if I you could know. pry him out of his locker <laughs> yeah i i i could have trained my <laughs> lock picking skills for that <laughs> okay let's talk about um you know the aliens and how they are actually visually represented yeah in, that's in, that's in interesting about aliens right you can you can actually there's no limits to how you can represent them yeah exactly but like in, in colors, you you, yeah. ha- you have the cliche of the, the, the little green man or the gray yeah. man. Uh, but actually, all kinds of colors are possible, especially in animation, of course. Eh? Stitch is blue and O from home is purple. Oh, um, th- he was called O? O, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, N.E.T. is brown. Yeah. Now, as for their shape, <clears throat> of course, the big cliche, the very typical thing that you see comes from the X-Files, I think. But, well, no, the X-Files got it from actual UFO yeah. reports. Um, is that they're small. and aliens are real. And they've got big heads and sort of like skinny little childlike bodies, I think. And big almond eyes that are entirely black. Yeah, that's kind of a good t- typical description, yeah. Very big head, like the big giant head. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then you have more abstract aliens, like in uh, Third Rock from the Sun, which we never get to uh, see confirmed, but they they say that they look like purple tubes on their (laughs) planet. They say Um, that, yeah. Yeah. And then in the host, these, um, yeah, these fluffy seeds from a dandelion or shiny sea urchins, or I, I, I don't know how you would describe them, but they're really cute. That's yeah, they're kind of very far too. removed. These designs or these ideas are very far removed from anything that we n- know, right? So that's yeah, and especially yeah. from the James Cameron take on aliens. Actually, <laughs> uh, the the fluffy seed was in uh, in Avatar, right? Oh yeah, uh, it lands on it lands on the Tiri's bow. <laughs> yeah, the the very pure spirit. The pure spirit. Actually, yeah, the ones from the host kind of look like that. Yeah, something mm. like that. Yeah. Only, yeah. Um, Yeah, uh, yeah, you have uh, aliens with only one eye, the kind of Cyclops-like aliens, like we have in The Simpsons, those those (laughs) green guys in their UFO. They're also always drooling. (laughs) Yeah. Kang and Codus Johnson. What, they have a last name? They have a a last name. They're called Johnson. They're called Johnson. (laughs) Kang and Codus. It's the typical... Um, absurd humor of the Simpsons. I, I remember those that guys the last name. that Kang was Kodo's <coughs> uh, sister, uh, according to one of the Halloween episodes. Really? <laughs> okay. When he said, "I am Kang, and this is my sister Kodo's." <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have aliens with a fishbowl on their head. Right. Yeah. That's um, that's a thing. <laughs> the, the, in Mars Attacks, the the, the oh. Martians have that. Uh, wasn't there a little fellow too? In uh, uh, we haven't mentioned <coughs> Futurama yet. Um, All right, uh, Leela has one eye. Oh right, yeah. And and wasn't there a fish with a fishbowl on its head too, or was that another series? I think you're thinking of um, Chicken Little. Right. Yeah, Chicken Little. Also about an alien. Yeah, but the fish wasn't an alien, was it? it but was it just was about fish. alien invasion, right? It was about an alien invasion. And he kept calling, uh, warning the people, and they didn't believe him. It was like, yeah. instead of boy cries wolf, it was chicken cries alien. alien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So the fishbowl on, on the head. Um, uh, can you think of other things? Uh, uh, yeah, typical uh, things? creatures with long faces. Oh, yeah. Like Either predator. sort of flattened out, like E.T. He's yeah. got like this pancake sort of head. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, or, um, or um, alien with its long sort of penis-shaped... Um, <laughs> No, I, 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 I'm not saying that as a joke. I've heard that that was actually the, I, the intention. Really? Oh no! Yeah. Our, our YouTube channel is gonna get cancelled because we said penis. No, apparently, uh, there's a lot of sort of deliberate sort of genital-looking design elements in the alien stuff. The, like James Cameron Be- alien? Or? Yeah, because they wanted to go for what they call body horror, and the way the alien reproduces is very scary um so that's part of the horror and so the the face huggers if have you seen what they look like uh, on the sort of the side that attaches to your face it's yeah it kind of looks like like phallic female anatomy oh uh, oh so. right that yeah yeah because they have a queen and yeah she lays eggs right so yeah yeah they're, they're also very <coughs> It's all very insect-based as well, which is something you see a lot in um, when when you want to have scary aliens. Very often they go for something insect-like, either just the, the the design or just or even you know what they're like, like with the, the eggs and the queen and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, that's uh, that's true. Yeah, insects like in uh, in Avengers, didn't you have these big giant roly polies? Uh, attacking from space. I seem to remember point. that from the first Avengers movie, but uh, I haven't really seen much of yeah, Marvel and, stuff. And then you, you also have other creatures like snails, like the huts in Star Wars. They kind of, they kind of look like snails. They, yeah, they they do. Except for they they don't have these eye stalks. But other than that, they they do look like snails. If we can consider uh, Star Wars creatures aliens, I would say right, yes. Yeah. We were just gonna do that. Um, right, yeah. Because no. it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. And then you have monster-like aliens, like like the Rancors and stuff. Uh, I love the Rancor. Yeah, me too. Uh, um, I love that uh, that end scene in um, Boba Fett. Oh, and he rides the Rancor, yeah. Yeah, that, that was so kick-ass. Why isn't there, like, this collectible sort of miniature yet that you can buy of Boba Fett riding the Rancor? Our sons would love it. If they yeah. had watched Boba Fett, which they haven't yet, uh, then you have mammals, of course, like uh, the Bothans in Star Wars. Oh yeah, kind of goat-like. Are they in any of? The, I'm, uh, they were mentioned in in Return of the Jedi, but you never get to see them. But you did get to see them in the comic books that were released later on. Um, right. But I don't know if they were ever in any of the movies or TV shows. The Bothans. Bothans, Bothans. Yeah, I'm not sure about the pronunciation either. Uh, then you had the Ewoks. And, and and the Wookiees, of course. They're like big hairy apes. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, Wookiees. Um, They're like uh, your grandfather called them cows, right? <laughs> yeah, hairy my, cows. <laughs> my granddad uh, didn't uh, like Star Wars. And when I was watching it, he was always commenting on it if he was in the neighborhood. And and he called uh, Chewbacca the the laughing cow. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Which is kind of a brand of cheese over here, so it's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And and um, Darth Vader, he called um, uh, the panting Coca Cola. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's some weird descriptions. Uh, I think it was it was really new for that generation. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. I mean. He... And then you have sea creatures like the Gungans. Uh, yeah. In Star Wars, and uh, there are other ones, right? Uh, like the um, yeah, the um, Admiral Akbar, the Mon Calamari. Yeah, the, he's basically just a big fish. <laughs> yeah. a, you know, he's got these big fish eyes, and but not with a fish ball on top of his head. <laughs> no, no, maybe yeah, maybe he should have had that. And then you have hybrids, and uh, especially uh, um, wow, that, that's, there's. Um, Russian a, a attack! Jet, a jet plane in the sky behind us. <laughs> it's alien attack. <laughs> alien invasion. <clears throat> uh, 
And then there's uh, hybrids, uh, and I think especially there's a lot of examples in Bethesda's Starfield game, which we haven't played yet, because if we would start playing that, then there would be no Growlout's game. So we really um, abstain yeah. from all new games. It's, or, it's, yeah. it's been difficult. We have to sort of grind our teeth because we really want to play it. but um, Or no. at least I really want to play it. We can't. But... Um, but for you, for you, dear listeners, we suffer through it. And um, but you, apparently, you have um, swarming fox bats and a tusk frog. You have a coral bug stalker. Uh, there are all kinds of hybrid creatures in Starfields. What what I have learned about uh, the game is that, which is interesting, is that there are no sort of intelligent aliens there are no sort of you know like people aliens like you would have like they're all creatures yeah Mm. if you encounter an alien it's it's an animal Mm. it's like uh, this wild creature that you can encounter uh, on a planet but the the people the speaking characters are all humans which is um an interesting take i think a more realistic take on outer space right and uh, other f- uh, examples of hybrids you can find in Mass Effect, like the the Batarians, mm. which are kind of humanoid but with multiple eyes. Also, and, uh, I thought they looked a bit like insect-like? spider heads. Yeah, but yeah, insect-like. Like There's a spiders. guy like that in in the Clone Wars too. He's like a big spider. Oh really? This this it's general. It's not Darth Maul. <laughs> no, there was this this general of the of the the um, separatist army. He gets killed by Anakin, I believe. Mm. I don't remember that. Uh, you also have the Hanar. Do I pr- pronounce that correctly? Um, In Mass Effect? Yeah. Um, They're kind of a squid flamingo bug I, I, kind of I creature. do remember that they were like these pink flying jellyfish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that I remember. I remember encountering it. It's, it's kind of at the beginning of the game. But yeah. They, Aren't they like communicating telepathically? Yeah, or? when they speak, they sort of light up, and their voices sort of sound in in an echo in yeah. your head. And but I remember um, when they that didn't have mouths. Right? You could communicate with them. You could have a conversation, and I I remember that you could have shepherds say, "You're just a big stupid jellyfish." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was funny. Well, I didn't <laughs> reply that because it was too nice. <laughs> I never did it either. I saw it on YouTube. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and uh, talking about insect-like hybrids, um, uh, aliens rarely have hair, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's a very keen observation. I it think kinda so, too. It kind of struck me. Uh, apart from E.T. wearing a wig in <laughs> E.T., I think I have never encountered an alien with hair for some reason when they yeah when they have aliens in a movie or a game they always depict them as hairless creatures why is that i don't know maybe because that's how we know they're aliens in a way they don't have hair i don't trust them they don't have hair <laughs> all you bald, bald people out there <laughs> we don't trust them. i mean in star wars you have lots of creatures with hair but that's star wars that's not really uh, about aliens right about in i think it's in a movie if you see a creature you want to know oh this is from another planet yeah you kind of have to see it and that's maybe why they come admit. to think of it hair is always associated with strength right like chewbacca and samson uh, yeah the, I, I was thinking of samson right away when you said that but Bald guys are usually the smart ones, like Megamind and uh, Lex Luthor, right? So maybe it's the intelligence of the aliens associated with the the bald heads. Well, it's a theory. Hmm. I don't know it, it, whether it makes sense. It's an interesting theory. <laughs> we'll have to ponder that. Yeah. Maybe one of our listeners can comment and explain why aliens usually don't have hair or maybe you have actually encountered an alien with hair we would really like to know <laughs> in that case yeah could it would it would completely debunk my theory <laughs> or maybe it's a a very stupid alien with hair yeah but 
I mean, we're not talking about but a strong real one. aliens. We're talking about aliens <laughs> yeah. in movies and, and shows. Yeah, right, and stuff. right. Oh yeah, and and then um, if they don't have hair, or, or if they do, uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, d they usually, they often have bat-like ears too, right? <laughs> like well, <clears throat> Yoda's race in Star Wars. Yeah, that's does that, true. Does that have a name? No, no. But Yoda's got big ears, but usually aliens also don't have ears, I think. I mean, a lot of the time, they show them without ears, like in the X-Files. Yeah, but sometimes if they do have ears, they're kind of more like pointy but then ears. Like in a quiet place, they, they're nothing but ears. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That makes mm. it so original. Yeah. Then you have the, the human lookalikes. Uh, right. So actually, the the aliens uh, that look like humans, which is a very big benefit to the <coughs> creators of the movies, because you need no makeup, you need mm -hmm. no rubber suits, you need no CGI. People cannot complain about too much CGI. Uh, for for example, in Third Rock. I'll complain about not enough CGI. The the <laughs> the characters from Third Rock they really blend in. In society, even they even take care of uh, wearing clothes that are uh, very much in style, and they they really. Uh, well, I don't know about Harry. Um, he tends to wear his own stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's kind of his thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Harry is the the the, the quote unquote brother of yeah. Sally and uh, Dick Solomon. Uh, then you have. Clark Kent, of course, Superman. Right, he's an alien. That's he's true. Alien. It's easy to forget that Clark Kent is actually an alien. But he looks so human. But he's not. But he looks so human. And he's gorgeous. And he's gorgeous. Well, he's supposed to be gorgeous, right? <laughs> then in Roswell, the the people in Roswell are also human looking. Uh, the, you have alien cyborgs in movies as well that look completely like human beings. That right. are indistinguishable oh, yeah, from yeah, human yeah. beings. Yeah, that's a whole... Maybe we should do another episode on, on robots and we can talk about Blade Runner and stuff where the robots look like humans right. and you can't distinguish them. And that's a whole theme. Um, yeah, another episode about robots. Or if you do have an idea about... Uh, if you want us to do an episode of Storytelling Podcast on certain themes, you can always leave uh, your ideas in the, the comments and we'll consider it. Yeah. Then you have humanoids. Uh, Mass Effect has a lot of uh, examples like that, like Garrus is, uh, I don't know which Yeah, so you, basically when you is. say humanoids, you mean something that's bipedal, it's sort of our general yeah. silhouette. Yeah, but kind of like the Egyptian gods, people with right. uh, strange heads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Garrus does have a strange head. He's got like, like a sort of parrot-like beak. Yeah. I always find it very strange that if you're, you're a female shepherd, you can actually have a relationship with Garrus. <laughs> I intend to be cautious, Doctor, but Garrus is important to me. You're not going to scare me off. Of course. Hormones. Regardless, come see me later. May need analgesic chafing. Because, I mean, imagine kissing that beak. You. <laughs> I mean, it's just... It does... <laughs> no. Just but no. okay. And in, in Star Trek, you, you have uh, a lot of uh, races that are humanoid. Like, you can immediately say they're not human, but they look really human. And in, uh, like, the Vulcans, I think that's the most famous. <laughs> uh, the pointy ears, again, pointy ears. And the bad hair haircuts. <laughs> yeah, I, I, basically, they're just elves, like D&D elves, right? But then but, in space. But then with bad haircuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Much worse haircuts. And then the Klingons are actually very wrinkly looking with pointy ears. Again, the pointy ears. Then you have the, the, the Kardashians <laughs> that have kind of queer beats under Wait, their skin. I don't know much about Star Trek, but there are there's a race of aliens called the Kardashians. <laughs> Kardashians. <laughs> do not mix them up with the Kardashians. That's a very dangerous race. Okay. So don't, don't mingle in with them, but the Kar Kardashians apparently are a race that have these bumps on their heads like they have these marbles oh, okay <laughs> under their skin or something in kind of in patterns they look really really original the thing is that it's always it's always just a human being 
but with some weird growth, right? <laughs> some, yeah. some weird little extra. Yeah, so not the Kardashians. <laughs> okay. Those are very dangerous and they also have bumps, but more of a silicone and Botox kind of bumps. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. <laughs> okay. Now in Star Wars you also have humanoid, I mean like the Twi'leks. Yeah, and they, are... they have Leku on their head. Yes. The the kind of tank tentacle things. Yes. And, and I know this because I'm an yeah. awesome geeky wife. If you are a real Star Wars fan, you know this. You know what you know that uh Twi'leks have Leku on their heads. <laughs> like uh Hera Syndulla, for example, yeah. from the Rebels series. Um Yeah, that's true. Um yeah, I, I always liked her as a character. They tend to Twi'leks they tend to be cast as sort of these attractive female characters yeah also in the, the star wars games yeah the, the male uh players tend to date uh, if they can date uh twi'leks uh, twi'leks in the in the games right or pick pick that as a yeah companion yeah um and then you have zabrak like uh darth maul yeah they're like they're usually male <laughs> yeah um and they've got bald heads with horns on them right. all over the place then you have the the shiz or the chiz yeah or... like admiral thron yeah blue guy with red eyes mass effect also has examples of humanoids yeah you already mentioned garrus um but uh, the asari are kind of like their version of the twi'leks because they're always female um But they really are always female. You have male Twi'leks in Star Wars, but the Astari are really are always female. Yeah, right. Because they reproduce with other races. That's how oh, they. I didn't know. That's didn't how know they that. continue. Um, and then you have the, the Kaminans in uh, Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, really however, long necks. They are yeah they are human like, but actually they 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 look more like the classic representation of aliens, right? Mm. Instead of humanoids, perhaps. And then... Oh, uh, Mass Effect also has uh, Solarians. Yes, um, like um, Dr. Um, Morden. If you give them a wig, yeah. they will become humanoids as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we have the aliens as more machine-like creatures. Yeah. Um, which is also another thing. You have the Geth in Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe they were... Um, they were created by another race as machines, but then they developed their own consciousness and culture and stuff. Yeah. Um, so you have machines, but you also have machines with organics inside. I think Doctor Who is a lot of examples, uh, like yeah. the Daleks, yeah. which are kind of waste basket tanks, <laughs> or maybe more like salt and pepper disposers. Yeah. With indoor climbing wall knobs on them and don't forget the plunger oh yeah there's a, and a plunger a toilet plunger on very there. dangerous very <laughs> dangerous and then you have these organic blobs in them which are apparently called kalets or mondasians wow you did your homework i don't I've i did been, my homework yeah, yeah. i don't, don't know anything I, about I, this it's not that i'm so smart that i remember because they, they mention it in the series but i forgot okay so i i looked it up and then you have the cyberman who I remember have been suggested to have once been humans and I think that's what I thought was scary about mm. them like you could be turned into a cyberman like you could be turned into a vampire or a werewolf right so it's a sort of futuristic take on that yeah mythological idea so or, that's or for folklore idea doctor who and then you had the war of the world aliens who were actually in the kind of creature-like machine yeah these as well. big tripods yeah. yeah but they do come out and then you see that they look like your typical aliens but what i thought was original is that like their machines they also had three legs right um and then you have all kinds of other aliens probably we, we've forgotten uh um about other kinds of aliens uh, you have the mysterious ones like the unseen aliens mm. uh, more like the predators that right yeah or, or you know aliens that you never get to see but yeah. you know they're there they're that, that's ca that can work and then you have the jawa in star wars which <laughs> i also thought were really 
this, this yeah they're they're mysterious yeah because they have these these red uh, christmas led lights of eyes <laughs> well that's probably how they did the eyes yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um it was mentioned in an episode of i think the mandalorian that they're actually hairy so we know that now right. because this 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 woman who works at the sort of uh, you know the the junkyards uh, where the, where she, she fixes his starship and she mentions oh, yeah, yeah. i dated <laughs> i dated a, a jawa mm-hmm. once i dated a jawa once uh too hairy or something <laughs> yeah i i thought that line was a bit yeah. too too much they should should have <laughs> I should have cut that. It kind of changed my own, my whole, my entire view on that character. Yeah. <laughs> her telling about. But maybe maybe her, she was just joking. Her ex. <laughs> yeah. She she looked very serious. <laughs> and and then of course what what's also very mysterious is uh, the suit of armor. Like you cannot see what's inside, but it's just a suit of armor. Right. And you can go all different designs and styles yeah. and. Yeah. And there must be more um, ways they to They kind of did something original in Independence Day, which was it kind of had this um, organic armor, the alien, right? Oh. On the outside, it had like this carapace. Um, it was still kind of fleshy and slimy, but it was tough. Uh, but on the inside is the real alien hidden inside, and it's like this really frail... Right, that's um, that's done more than often, right? I, I, mm. I believe, uh, was it in Home or another animation movie where the the alien turns out to be... Uh, you, you have the impression that he looks one way and then uh, at the end it's revealed that there's just another creature inside. It looks right, completely yeah. different. Uh, it really, uh, it sounds familiar. It, it was done in Team America with Kim Jong-il, who turned out to be just a cockroach from outer space. Oh, right. Which is probably one of the conspiracy <laughs> theories that is true. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, aliens are usually, they're intelligent or they're strong, but they can have abilities and powers as well. Yes, yes. Like you have the aliens from Roswell that we've mentioned. They are call, called the Royal Four and they have abilities. But I always thought they were kind of lame. Max is kind of the main, the main character, the main, the main alien character. And he can heal people. And that is also how the series starts off. Because I believe he heals Liz, a human girl, in the pilot. And that they fall in love. Obviously, that's uh, it's kind of about uh, relationships, uh, human-alien relationships. And Isabel is his um, his sister. She can enter people's dreams, I believe. Mm, like Freddy. Uh, yeah, but less scary because <laughs> she's, she's kind of good-looking as well. Mm. Um, and then Tess, she can cause people to see things that are not really there. And then I believe Michael's power is either never revealed or I didn't get it. Or you I, missed that episode. I, I missed that episode, probably. <laughs> I, I, I still think the Royal Four sounds like a music band. <laughs> you know? Yeah. This is the Royal Four, and on the guitar we have Max. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, then Superman, of course, you know, basically he can do anything, right? He he's the whole package. Yeah. yeah he's, he's gorgeous. He's he has... strong. He can, he's got x-ray vision. He can fly. He's got supernatural good looks, he has journalism, journalism. <laughs> yeah, um, which is a superpower because you know apparently it, it's really hard to do well. Um, <laughs> and but he's only got two weaknesses. Um, one of them being, of course, kryptonite. And Lewis Lane. Yeah, that's the other one. Lewis Lane is, is his other weakness. Okay, so what kind of Sounds do aliens make? Languages, various grunts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, languages do they speak? Or grunts? Yeah, uh, they c- it can can be all over the place as well. You can do whatever you like with it, yeah, right? Yeah, that's true. You have the Navi language, which is actually the Umkametske. Yeah, really developed and um, <laughs> by an actual linguist. Mm-hmm. And then you have Klingon, which also I think. people around the world actually speak, which is. Kind I of think, amazing. Yeah, it's also developed by an actual Like language. they speak uh, Elvish, uh, based on uh, Tolkien's uh, Middle Earth. They act, they're actually people who speak Klingon. So that's pretty cool. 
If one of you can uh, speak Klingon, uh, please enter your Klingon sentence in the comment section and we'll try to translate it. And please be gentle. Do not <laughs> insult us or anything. Actually, um, no, I'll, I'll come back to this. Um, <laughs> I want to say something else about language and aliens. Okay. But first I'll mention um, what's on the list. The that, list. The list we've got here. Nonsense languages. Uh, basically, um, you know... Wookies, they they go like, well, various grunts. Yeah. And then Han Solo says, yes, I agree that uh, Parliament should ratify that agreement. But you know, <laughs> sort of... Also a trope, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someone speaks a completely uh, different nonsense language yeah. and then you have the character who completely understands. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of like it's, uh, it's like being a parent, right? When your toddler starts talking... And everyone yeah. is like, "What? What's he saying?" It's and you're true. like, <laughs> "It's true. You, <laughs> you, you do really get understand. kind of a yeah. secret language." Secret language, yeah. And then Hatiz, which is um, a, a fake language, or that that isn't really developed. It's got a few words that come back, like "pudu" and really, uh, yeah. To me, it just sounds like "umba wanga wumba." Yeah, most wumba. most of it is just yeah. Yeah, it's just that. I'm I'm terrible at this. So. Uh, I, I thought it was a pretty good <laughs> impression. You have creature sounds, uh, yeah, especially if they are they're insect-like. Yeah, like in signs, the aliens. With, with oh, their we haven't mentioned clicks. signs yet. Yeah, various. Clicks. That's how they communicate, right? And those aliens are a blast for the sound designer. Yeah. And then you just have the the ones who speak like we do, like usually English. Yeah. For some reason. <laughs> Yeah, like in the, in the <laughs> Simpsons with Kang and Kodos, when they say, how come you speak English? And the aliens say, no, we don't speak English. We speak our own alien language. But by a stunning coincidence, our languages are exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, but actually, um, Arrival, the whole movie is about language um, and how different the alien language is. Um, but I don't want to spoil it. But um, yeah, you should see it. It's very interesting. Arrival, yeah. Uh, the the aliens communicate one. in a very different way. Um, and that's kind of the whole point of the movie. Okay. Then you have different locations surrounding aliens. You have the typical the planets, like the planets we know, like Mars. But it would be a pity if you stuck to our own galaxy, right? If you can invent planets and just go all the way. And sure, of course, yeah. And go to far away places. And you even have aliens from different dimensions. Yeah, like uh, in Indiana Jones 4, where I think George Lucas just wanted to have aliens, but Spielberg said, like, aliens from outer space? No, I don't want that. And then Lucas said, no, 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 they're not from outer space. Uh, they're from another dimension. Oh, then it's uh, fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of what happened, apparently. Oh. Um, now, personally, I think... Um, I do think that a lot of people said that aliens in Indiana Jones, you can't do that. But I thought it the movie takes place in the 50s. It so made it, sense. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of right for that time period to have that theme. And it was, it was original with the crystal skull. Yeah. It, it had a really original take on aliens. I don't and know why people hate it so much. Oh, it's because uh, Indiana Jones hides in a fridge to, uh, when, they, when they're doing a, an a, atomic bomb. Uh, a, a nuclear attack when there's a nuclear exercise. Yeah, yeah, it, it's. He hides in a fridge yeah. and and he survives and that's what everyone one keeps fuzzing it's about. It's not like the other movies were more realistic. No, like or you believable. You or... had uh, hearts hearts ripping out in in the Temple of Doom and you had these laser beams coming out of the the, the Ark of the Covenant. All of exactly. A I mean. I think what happens is people just start to take it too seriously at some point because uh, these movies meant a lot to them when they were kids and then many years later a new one comes out and at that point they have these cherished memories and they take it too seriously to be able to just enjoy it as kind of the silly fun that it always was. Sometimes I have the impression that adults um, are kind of ashamed to enjoy a movie as if they were kids like i'm this mm -hmm. big adult now i shouldn't enjoy this film like uh, it's 
it's not childlike and funny, it's serious and it has these mature themes in it and and I'm an adult. <laughs> Which is the way a teenager would behave. Just just mentioning it. <laughs> so why not just embrace the fact yeah. that your inner child is always present and it will yeah. always remain there and have just fun. Just let yourself be a kid from time to and time. And enjoy a movie, even if it's just silly. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, that's a little... A little side note. Uh, side note. Yeah. Um, maybe Transportation. Of, yeah, how do they, how do they um, get around? Well, in flying saucers, of course. Yeah. Everybody knows that. The UFOs, the yeah. unidentified flying objects. Well, well, well it, not... A, they're identified now. They're flying saucers. So. Oh yeah, right. But they have this. <laughs> either they have this typical round form, or they are triangular, right? Yeah, you see that a lot too. Triangular spaceships. Yeah. And but also. Or spherical. Yeah. Like just a, an orb. Oh yeah. Type of thing. Um. And then a lot of lights, as well, and speed. Yes. Yeah, it's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> a lot um, of lights, flickering lights. Uh, yeah, or they can teleport. Sometimes, the aliens can teleport. Yeah, right. Um, not to be uh, the UFOs are not to be confused with the Elon Musk projects. Yeah, I had that experience. <laughs> I told you right that when I was walking yeah. outside and it was dark and I saw these lights, and I had no idea what it was. <laughs> yeah. And you were actually in a cornfield. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, yeah, I, it's true. <laughs> I was walking, well, next to a cornfield. By cornfield. Corn when at you saw night, <laughs> and I looked up at the stars above. The, there was there was a forest next to me with with pine trees, like in in ET. And I saw the stars, and suddenly I saw this this line of of lights, like lights, all in like a, a, a little train floating through the sky and I thought what is this I've never seen that <laughs> but turns out it was this yeah what was it called again you looked it up a, a, yeah a space link or I don't know what it was yeah it was some it was some Elon Musk related just a bunch of satellites really <laughs> but it, I, I was a bit scared I'll, I'll be honest I, I can imagine uh, under the right circumstances uh, yeah uh, okay anyway um, so let's summarize what we've been talking about for the past one and a half hours. Uh, so aliens have a lot of different looks in storytelling, and they have a lots of different. They have, and they have a lot of different functions. Yeah. So you know, you can have aliens in your story just to trigger the audience's imagination. Um, yeah. Introduce possibilities. Then you, um, if you like to philosophize about the question of your own habits and customs, that's a, a good way to introduce aliens. Yeah, or just laugh about it in comedy. Yeah, or in romance. It's also a hit, apparently. Mm. Uh, if the love interest is different, uh, especially teenage girls really like that. I don't. Because <clears throat> I'm not a teenage girl. I'm a grown-up. I'm mature. I'm an adult. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like, like with werewolves and vampires and werebears and, and, I don't know, mermaids or uh, I don't know what's out there. Uh, if your boyfriend or girlfriend is special, I think it makes you feel special too. Or if someone from another, from another planet, out of all the human beings, takes a fancy to you, that just makes you feel like the, the special chosen one, like the, the most interesting mm. person on Earth. And I think everyone wants to feel like that, right? Even if it's not true. <laughs> And then in horror, aliens make a great enemy, since we don't know anything about them, and we have to learn fast in order to defeat them. And they can also be faster and smarter or more capable in other ways than humans, which makes them more challenging adversaries. Yeah, exactly. Um, you see a lot of that in, uh, you know, like, horror and action. Mm -hmm. And as for graphic designers and props people and CGI people in movies, they are just tons of fun. Yeah. Of course, of course. So, what's your favorite alien? Favorite? What, what do you mean? Do you mean like the, the cutest or the scariest or the... First the cutest, then the scariest. <laughs> oh, um, the cutest. Um, well, if, if Star Wars counts, I'd say Grogu, I think. Oh, you stole my one. It's everyone's favorite. I was going to say that one. And, but... Okay, if you pick Rogu, then and then 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 I pick E.T. because he's really cute, especially with the wig. 
because he's hairless, because he's an alien. And uh, the scariest one, yeah, I think, um, huh, would be a tie between um, Cameron's aliens and... No, actually, yeah, Ridley Scott was first. Yeah, but he had more. Cameron had more. <coughs> <laughs> and um, and those from uh, Quiet Place, I don't know what they're called. Oh, right. So I, I don't think they give them a name, in the movie at least. Um, yeah. What's your favorite? Um, you know what? I'm gonna just to be original. I'm gonna say, <laughs> Shai Hulud, the the sandworm from Dune. <laughs> oh yeah. Because, especially in the new movie, it's so huge and it's got so many teeth. That's kind of scary, right? And, and impressive. Absolutely. If he's your best friend, then you really have a benefit. <laughs> Nobody will actually question your uh, absolute uh, power of the <laughs> entire planet. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of what happens, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm sure we forgot to talk about a lot of aliens. Because there are so many different ones out there. If we did, please add them in the comments section. And also, we would love to hear all of your suggestions for cool games, movies series or other forms of entertainment about aliens right and if you think our podcast is out of this world or simply uh, you just like our foreign ramblings uh, support us on patreon as uh, also for our dramatized audiobooks which is still the main thing we do uh, still not really about aliens epic fantasy for now a uh, bit of Maybe yeah. horror or dark fantasy as well, and fairy tales. But we might, uh, there, maybe there will be alien races in our stories once. We, we have yeah. an outline for a space adventure series. Yeah, for, yeah, one day we would like to do that. Yeah, yeah if we don't get um, too distracted by our stupid boring jobs in the <laughs> meanwhile. <laughs> also, yeah, we have a Discord server. And it's pretty dead over there, so if you'd like to li liven up the place, uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Aliens welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So feel free to contact us, send us a YouTube comment, like us, send us an email, or you know, phone home. Right, and fly by some other time. Okay, this is Elin and Domin signing off. <laughs>